from a place we're not allowed to reveal. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Alright, yeah, that's pretty cool. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. I've got our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Several of you sent this story. It's a total of about nine lines. And I will read it to you. Dateline, Fort Wright, Kentucky. Police in northern Kentucky arrested a woman who officers say, get this, traded sex for gasoline. Police in Fort Wright (laughs) set up a prostitution sting and said one of the suspects they arrested Engaged in sex for a $100 gasoline card and other gifts. 34-year-old Angela Eversoll of Fort Wright is charged with prostitution and doing business without an occupational license. Well, if you're a prostitute, can you get an occupational license in Kentucky? Curious. She pleaded not guilty at a Tuesday arraignment. Police also arrested a man they said paid ever so. He is 50-year-old Kenneth Nowak of Avon, Indiana. Kenton County Prosecutor Ken Easterly said, It's sad when people are selling their bodies for gas. Now, two things here. One is prostitution should be legal. There is no reason prostitution should not be legal. None. This is another one of those victimless crimes that are designed to uh, once again give the government an opportunity to start checking around and seeing what you're doing. And um, there's an awful lot of legal prostitution out there. I don't see why any of it should be illegal. You marry a rich guy and divorce him after six months and take a million dollars in settlement or alimony or whatever. Why isn't that prostitution? It is prostitution. It's just legal prostitution. So this idea of arresting people who trade sex for money or favors or gifts or even gasoline, stupid. Stupid. But more importantly, we're seeing more and more stories about gasoline. Gasoline now is the excuse for everything. Fourth of July weekend, nobody's traveling because of the high cost of gasoline. Every get-rich-quick scheme on the Internet, every late-night infomercial now is about gasoline. How to profit from the gasoline crisis. How to save gasoline with gadgets and additives. People trying to make money in the futures market or the commodities market. People saying that, oh, now the kids can't afford back-to-school clothes this summer because of gasoline. We can't afford to buy dinner because of gasoline. We can't afford to go here because of gasoline. Wah, wah, wah. I am so tired of hearing about this. And by the way, let me remind you, I know many of you may want to call in and say, well, you're like my, like my sisters would do. Well, you're rich. Not a problem for you because you're rich. Can I tell you something? 
the first energy crisis, quote unquote, that we had. I was 16 years old. Then we had another one when I was 24, about 1980 or so. During the Carter administration, when we had the Iranian hostage crisis. It just goes on like that. We have these crises every few years. But uh, all you morons out there who have, um, you know, acted like we're not dealing with a limited resource and have continued to uh, buy bigger and big, bigger vehicles, which one of you morons bought a Hummer? I'm just having a hard time. I The stories keep coming out, and I'm having a hard time feeling sorry for you. I've been reading these amazing stories. Do you know there are car dealers now who are refusing not just offering lowball offers, but refusing to accept SUVs and trade. Do you know about this? You can't even give them to the dealer. And that's exactly right. SUVs, minivans, small trucks, big trucks. People are now stuck with these behemoths. And they're crying about it. They're like, are you an idiot? Did you really think gasoline was going to stay uh, under a dollar a gallon forever? Did you think it's going to stay below $2 a gallon forever or $3 a gallon? You're a jerk. <laughs> you're, you're crazy. And now your whole life is such a uh, house of cards. It's like dominoes. You know, the minute gas prices go up to four fifty or $5 a gallon, everything collapses. You know, stop smoking. Get rid of your uh, Starbucks addiction. There's a variety of ways to save money so you can pay for the cost of gasoline. A lot of things you're wasting money on. I mean, I, I really think people are overdoing it. I think people are whining a little too much about the price of gasoline, crying and whining. You know, gasoline, I, I, I just got back not long ago from a couple of weeks in France. And in fact, uh, in the past year, I've spent about 12 weeks in Europe. Gasoline in Europe, after you finish calculating the difference between a dollar and a euro and a liter and a gallon, gasoline in Europe costs over $8 a gallon. Over $8 a gallon. How do they deal with it? They ride scooters to work, bicycles, smart cars. They walk. You know, the amazing thing is when I'm in Europe, nobody's whining about this. Everybody knows gasoline is expensive, and that's the way it is. Americans are just a bunch of little crybabies whining about this. We still have among the cheapest gasoline in the world. I know Venezuela is a lot cheaper than we are, but they've, they've got oil in the ground that they're pumping. Okay. What are they selling it to the locals for nine cents a gallon? <laughs> that doesn't count. We still have among the cheapest gas seed in the world, cheaper than Mexico, cheaper than Canada, and certainly cheaper than all of Europe. And you little whining crybabies out there, you little snivelers complaining about the price of gasoline, I just don't get it. I don't get it. You should have planned for this. It's your own fault. Isn't it? Tom Likas, 1-800-5800-TOM, 1-800-5800-866. It makes me sick to my stomach the way they worship you. It's ridiculous. It's like you're some sort of god or something, and you've got your own little Bible going on. It's the Tom Likas Show. Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-JOM. That's our telephone number. Wah, wah, wah. The cost of gasoline. Wah, wah, wah. Matt on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Yes. Yeah, I wanted to call and say I agree with you 100%. The same guys who whine about the price of gas now being three, four bucks are the same guys who up here in Seattle voted down a public transit system because it was too expensive. Well, how expensive is it now, right? Exactly. I mean, yeah. I mean, why couldn't you pay up front for a public transit system, transit system like having San Francisco or, like you said, in Europe? Those guys know how to move. Nobody needs a car in London. That's exactly so, right. 
So why can't, you know, if you're really worried about the gas, if you want to pay for the gas, why not pay up front for a nice public transit system like so many people have been asking you for for I don't know how long? Well, in Los Angeles, uh, we're not going to get a public transportation system because people are not going to use it. Right, it's and the car culture. Well, it's beyond the car culture. Uh, it goes beyond that. Uh, it is because with the car culture came the spread of humanity. Right. Right, you the see? suburb spread. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you know, when you talk about some of the old school cities in the United States, mm -hmm. um, New York has a downtown, and it's where people go to work. Right. Chicago has a downtown. It's where people go to work. Boston has a downtown. It's where people go to work. Right. Uh, in Los Angeles, uh, uh, there is no city center. That's true. It's completely decentralized. So carpooling is not practical. Mm -mm. Uh, for a public transportation system to work, honestly, you would have to have it, um, you'd have to have a thousand subway stops. That's true. And I get you're right in L.A., but in Seattle, they could certainly do that because they have a downtown hub most of the people commute to. But, yeah, you're right in L.A., you're right, it probably wouldn't work. And as far as Seattle is concerned, it's the same deal. It's like uh, it, it's just not as big as Los Angeles, uh, but uh, in the absence of public transportation to the outer areas uh over the years uh now you have that uh, whole thing with uh everything over the 520 now you've got these little city centers out there uh you know Bellevue and whatnot I'd agree and with then you you've got places north of the city like Kirkland and I, I mean you do not have it isn't just one uh city anymore no but you do have traffic moving through major corridors like you do in San Francisco so you could have major bus corridors or major uh lines let's say like BART in San Francisco. That doesn't make the, the commute to all the other areas, but it does make some to major areas, and that re does reduce the traffic over the bridges and such. I, I understand what you're saying, mm -hmm. but I have a hard time believing that people are going to do it. <laughs> That's true. I just have a hard time. Okay. Well, I just um, You know, I, I think the cities that are going to do it are the cities that are used to doing it. I mean, L.A., public transportation that exists has a reputation. Yes. And the reputation is these are the lowest of the low. These are the people who can't afford to drive a beater. Right. So there are some people who are afraid to ride it. Yeah. There are some people who don't want to learn it. And let's face it. Let's take where I live. I live in the Hollywood Hills. Even if I took public transportation, it would drop me off half a mile straight uphill from my house, straight downhill from my house. Um, there's no direct way to go. And every way the buses go, it takes hours to get where you're going. Right. Right. And, of course, L.A. grew up that way. I mean, they used to have a trolley car system, but they elected for the cars. And now, But remember, when L.A. had a trolley car system, people lived in L.A. That's what true. we now call L.A., Includes places like Studio City. Right. Includes places like uh, Van Nuys. I mean, these are part of the city of Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And they are far from downtown L.A. In the days of the trolley, downtown L.A. was the center of everything. And the center of L.A. didn't go any further than Western Avenue. Western Avenue in Los Angeles got its name because it was like the western border of the city. Right. With Orange now, Now it's considered the, the eastern part of the city. Right. Okay. Well, I just want to, I really complain about the whiners up here because public transportation up here would have alleviated at least a lot of traffic. So, you know, and these are the same guys, you know, taking up a whole lane with a Humvee. Well, don't want to say by the way, uh, you know, we've spent an awful lot of time in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. How many of those whiners were the ones buying the Eddie Bauer edition Ford Explorers and things like that over the years? Here, here, because they still want to feel like rugged outdoorsmen going downtown. Yeah, well, well, good luck, folks. Uh, now you got to pay for the gasoline to put in that thing. Yeah. Just a bunch of behemoths now. <laughs> All right, uh, thank you so much, Matt. Appreciate the call. Thank you, Tom. Could you take me out old school? I certainly can. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. That is our telephone number. 
Um, I've uh, lost the connection with the studio for just a moment, so let's go. I believe Gilbert is next on the line. Hello. How you doing, Tom? I'm doing okay. All right. Um, I, the whole topic of gas prices is always a little sensitive for some people. My biggest point is, like you said, though, why why the hell would you be driving an SUV, some type of big truck, you know, ain't heard of with these hybrids and technology and batteries? I've seen things on the Discovery Channel where people are making, students are making vehicles that push out 100, 150 miles per gallon with the power of a V6, you know? And it's things like that that are frustrating to hear about being discovered and being worked on, and then they disappear, and we're stuck with 28, 30 miles per gallon. And even and even that so much is a luxury to, to, to people because there's people, middle class, low middle class, that can't afford a new vehicle, can't afford to put themselves in a hybrid. And at the same time, I can appreciate their whining a little bit, but... Lo and behold, I, I'm not going to whine about it either. I'm, I'm middle class, low middle class, and, and I'm doing something about it. I'm going to the Air Force where I'm, I'm putting myself on the lighter side of gas prices where I'm not going to have to deal with that. Yeah, you know, someone else has to do it. There are solutions. There are solutions for people that want to find them. But at the same time, it's, it's a horrible predicament for our society to be in. And that's where the whining's coming from. Would you agree? Well, uh, I believe the whining is coming from all the morons who thought that uh, it was an American birthright to have dollar a gallon or 29 cents a gallon gasoline. Right. You know, I, I can appreciate what you're saying. People, people need to get realistic, grow up a little bit, and and, and show. What a little, makes anyone think Europeans should pay eight dollars a gallon and we should pay a dollar a gallon? You know, I, I, I'm not, I'm not by any means, way, shape, or form, a politician. I understand. You know, there might be some things behind it where so and so needs to charge for this, or maybe there was connections along the line with the oil companies or whatever. I mean, gas prices are what they're going to be. It's, 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 it's a product being sold in a capitalistic society where people are going to try to benefit from it as much as possible, and they have every right to do that. They're selling it. Yeah. Yep, you're, you're exactly right about that. Gilbert, thank you for the call. Jaime on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, uh, Tom. This, uh, I have a great issue for you. Americans are lazy, man. Well, I, I know we're lazy, but how does it relate to gas prices? Because they, they don't want to, uh, they want to buy all these expensive cars and everything just to, uh, may, uh, and then they wonder about it after. Like, oh, I can't pay it. I can't buy, uh, pay for my gas and stuff. I, I think, well, it goes beyond being lazy. I don't think Americans, Americans have no aptitude for numbers or finance. I mean, how do you have Ed McMahon living under the freeway overpass? Because uh, they choose it. They choose well, they don't the, realize they're choosing it. And that, that's the thing. How do you not realize you're spending yourself uh, into bankruptcy? How do you not realize that? Stupid. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Megan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Dad. How are you doing? All right, sir. Got um, her. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't hear you there, dear. <laughs> um, I actually recently bought a Vespa. Um, about probably about a month ago now, and I love it. The only thing I can't do right now is drive a lot for work, which I do, because the whole permit issue with a permit, you can't drive on the freeway or at night. And unfortunately, because I commute all over Orange County, I have to drive on the freeway. So Wait a minute. When you say you have a permit, what does that mean? Oh, I have a mot motorcycle permit right now because I didn't have a license before. I ne had never had. So, you, so in California, you need a motorcycle license to drive a scooter. You do, or at least a scooter license. It depends what kind of vehicle you have. If it's 150cc um, or under, then you can have the moped permit, and that would that limits you, though. You can, like, only go, I think, 40 miles an hour tops only on the um, street. With a 200cc motor or higher, you can go on the freeway in California. Some other states, I've heard that it's much higher, like at least 250 I had a friend in um, Illinois that said that it was 250cc is the limit there. I know nothing about scooters, nothing. <laughs> but well, the, the refers to your, your engine power is the, is the CC power. They, and, lo they uh, look like accidents waiting to happen. <laughs> well, if you drive, I've become such a better driver overall with my scooter because I'm such more so much more vigilant. You have to be hyper-vigilant of 
everyone around you and your scooter and your vehicle. So now that I'm in the car right now driving, I'm aware of so much more of everything. My boyfriend even bought a Vespa, and that's one of the main reasons why I bought it, because I fell in love with his. And we're all into, the, like, the style and the whole culture and whatever, too. So it's, it's, it's what, awesome. What is the, well, wait, 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 what is the scooter culture? I have to understand this. <laughs> well, um, we, there's a whole, if you ever are interested, which I'm sure you're not, there's a whole thing about um, kind of like the whole, I don't, I don't want to say hippie movement, but that's not, that's really not what it is, but it's more like kind of just laid back. And with, um, whenever we see another scooter, or especially another Vespa, you're supposed to get the peace sign. I found oh. out about this. I have no Jesus, idea. come on. I don't know. I know exactly. It's ridiculous. But it's, it's kind of neat. I like the way they look. I like the style. And it's also, I, I'm getting 75 to 110 miles per gallon. Is the Do you coast. split lanes in those things? Um, I don't. I don't. Only when in stop traffic. Like I cannot traffic. believe they allow people to split lanes. I cannot, especially on a scooter. Well, in, in moving traffic, too. That's ridiculous. In moving I mean, traffic, there were times, there were times, <clears throat> I cannot see. I cannot see you. I know, I know. It's it's extremely dangerous, and especially people um, on like sports bikes that are going, you know, 150 miles an hour on the freeway, <laughs> and they're splitting lanes when you're going like 75 or whatever. It's idiots. Totally dangerous. I, I but it's idiotic to allow it. I completely. We're the only state that does, Tom. California it's, is the it's only idiotic. State. It's idiotic. I completely agree with you. <laughs> Stupid. Oh, hey, did. Tom. Thanks for taking my call. Can you blow me up? I certainly can. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Rob of the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you doing? Doing okay, Rob. Hey, I was just calling to let you know or, or to ask if you knew that when you factor in the cost that the American taxpayer is paying to fund our military machine over in the Middle East that's defending our oil rights, that we're actually paying about 12 to $15 a gallon for gas. Well, and that assumes you believe that we're fighting for oil rights in Iraq, number one. And number two, um, the real problem with the cost of gasoline, again, has to do with Americans' refusal to uh, understand numbers or finance in any way. Uh, the biggest cause to the increase in the price of a gallon of gasoline is the weakening of the dollar, something we have done in this country by lowering interest rates so low that the dollar has been weakened. When the dollar is weakened, even if the price of a barrel of oil stays the same, in whatever the currency is in Saudi Arabia or wherever, the price to us goes up because our dollar buys less foreign currency. Well, that's absolutely true. I travel internationally for a living, and I can tell you there's no way I could afford to do it on my own nickel. I will tell you also that in Europe, although gasoline prices are higher than they were, their increase is much lower than our increase, and that's because their currency is worth more than our currency. Yeah, we also have a futures market in oil, which I think drives the price unusually or artificially high in the state. Well, people keep saying that, but if that were true, there would come a time when people are stuck with so much oil that they can't unload that they will have to unload it all at one time and the price will collapse. Well, uh, but there are futures in everything. There are futures in just about everything. That's a true statement. Well, I, I really do feel that the, the U.S. in part is, is over in the Middle East for, you know, well, it's certainly for our benefit. And in this case, it's the benefit of our uh, ability to, to buy oil and use it in excess of, of what we're producing, certainly here in the state. Oh, it's like all the morons. You saw that poll, uh, was it yesterday or the day before, the poll that said that uh, Americans uh, see uh, getting new sources of oil as more important than anything else. Uh, more important than the environment or anything. And, of course, all the conservatives are making hay with this, that uh, rather than cutting back, Americans would like to drill into, you know, Santa Barbara, they'd like to drill into Malibu, or wherever else they think they can find oil. Yeah, well, you also have to remember the average American is an idiot. 
Oh, I, I, I don't disagree with that. I make my living on it, for God's sake. Tom Like It. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. Like It. You say, oh, women are just toilets? That does not make any sense. Human okay. toilet, yes. That is crap. Like, okay, a girl cannot be called a toilet. Appropriate. It's the Tom Like It Show. It's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. And uh, we're talking about the ongoing whining about gasoline prices and uh, the woman in Kentucky who uh, was arrested for allegedly selling her body for gas. Wah. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Rob on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How you doing, Tom? Doing okay. Good, good. Well, I got a few things to say. First of all, um, the t- gas prices went up only on 80 cents on per- uh, on assumption that Saudi is not producing enough oil. Um, and secondly, I think that all the money we're using in Iraq can be... Uh, targeted towards alternate energy or actually building, you know, subways or whatnot around L.A. to make it better. What do you think about that? Well, uh, first of all, uh, if you think they're going to end the war in Iraq and then send the money to L.A. to build subways, I think you've got another guest coming. Well, and generally, just maybe uh, t- uh, targeted towards alternate energy, different kind of fuel. I mean, you know, uh, ethanol or... Uh Something else. Well, ethanol has been I'm a sure big joke. I mean, they could come up with something if they want. Ethanol I mean, has been a big joke. Been a big joke. True. It true. costs well, almost as much joke. to produce a gallon of ethanol as it does a gallon of gas. Hey, but do you think the money that we're spending elsewhere can be targeted towards different kind of energy? Or I think the money we're spending elsewhere should not be spent. I think we need to cut our budget. True, because that lowers the uh, value of the dollar as well, doesn't it? Well, of course it does, because you have to print more dollars in order to be more dollars in debt, as we are now. Exactly, because every dollar that's printed is actually printed with debt, with interest. Well, every time a dollar is printed, the value of the other dollars goes down that much more. True, true. And another thing, Tom, my friend uh, is going through a breakup right now, and I just turned him on to you. Um, What word of advice do you have to give him? Don't be a pussy. Sack up. Yes, that's what I told him. I'm like, man, it's summer, you're a free man, there's, you know, ladies everywhere, go ahead and do the damn thing. Get it done. Get it done. All right, brother, can you take me out Michael Vick style? I certainly can. Awesome, have a great day, Tom. You too. Oh. You know, it's Michael Vick oh. style. Do we, do we have, oh, we're having a little technical problem. <laughs> One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here. Look at these. Let's say hello here to uh, Luke on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Father. Son, how are you? Good, good. Long time listener, first time caller. Thank you. I would like to. Uh, I'd like to. You know, state a couple facts to all those little wannabe tree hugging hippies out there driving around their little Prius. Uh, I know? don't think people are driving Priuses now. Because they're tree huggers, I think they're driving Priuses because they want to get sixty miles per gallon. Well, listen to this, Tom. I mean, how much does a Prius cost? Twenty-five grand. That's not a lot of money. Well, when you can buy a Corolla and get ten miles per gallon less on the highway than a Prius, you have to drive thirty thousand miles a year to make up the cost in just fuel savings. Oh, there are many people in Southern California who drive thirty thousand miles a year. Or 24,000 miles a year. That's true. But then you also have to think, when the car reaches 200,000 miles, the batteries need to be replaced. Then we talk... Well, we we don't know yet if that's true because there aren't any cars with 200,000 miles on them. Yeah, that's true, but that's the estimated amount of mileage that Toyota expects. I I understand what they're saying, but we we just don't know yet. And by the way... um, a lot of the numbers that people have quoted on the break-even point for one of these cars was based on 
two fifty a gallon gasoline, three dollar right. a gallon gasoline. We're crawling towards five dollar a gallon gasoline, and all those numbers are are meaningless now. Well, I mean, the stretch is still the same. When we, you have to drive a certain amount of miles a year to make up the cost. And let's not even look at the mileage you have to drive. Each you year. have let's to drive a certain amount of miles per year. But but here's the thing: the higher a gallon of gas goes in price, the less you have to drive. Right, right. To, to, to keep the money in your pocket, of course. The less you have to drive to break even. Okay. Well, I mean, I mean, if the gas, if they had an estimate of what it would be like if gas was three dollars a gallon. And now gas is over four dollars a gallon. That means you drive thirty three percent less to break even. Correct. Right. But, yeah, I mean, my figures could be wrong. I'd also like to point. Well, they out. they might have been true when gas was two dollars a gallon right. or two fifty. Right. right. We passed that a long time ago, and I've seen some of the numbers you're talking about, and they're based on old figures. Gasoline has been going through the roof since May. Well, I mean, even so, most of these people that bought the Priuses back in, you know, 2001 when they first came out had no idea that the, that their car is twice as harmful to the environment than a Hummer. How I so? The batteries. The, the, to produce the batteries and to dispose of the batteries from start to finish makes the Toyota Prius twice as harmful to the environment start to finish. Well, than I haven't seen that. You know what? What is your source for that? Because I'd like to read that. You can Google it. No, no. You, nickel, metal, hydro. Why, why don't you know the source? Uh, I can't think of an Internet website off the top of my head. All right. Jesus. Uh, and, and then who even knows who's writing the stuff you're reading on the Internet? It could be some blog. I mean, I don't, I don't know what your source is. Stupid. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Ellen on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, how are you, Tom? I'm great. Good. Well... I am a 44-year-old single mother who's lived in Los Angeles her whole life and moved down to San Diego seven years ago. And, in fact, I'm en route to San Diego as we speak and discovered your conversation going on on the radio. And I think there's one important perspective that's being missed in that the one thing, you're talking about the house of cards falling and nobody can do anything now because the price of gas is so much. But the one thing you got to remember is that the price of gas increased so quickly that people's incomes, interest rates, yada, 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 didn't go up with it. And that's why the people who didn't plan financially are falling No, apart. the people didn't plan financially because Americans hate numbers, hate budgeting, hate planning, hate living beneath their means. Well, that's true. But regardless of that, on an individual basis, you know, people who don't, it's still the fact remains. It did go up higher than wah, people wah, wah, do. Wah, 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 no, wah. it's true. Wah. So how is it not true? It's not whether it's true or not. You know what? People should have planned for it. They shouldn't have been buying SUVs. They shouldn't have been buying those huge behemoths that they're all stuck with yes. now. Right. They were and morons, and they're getting exactly what they deserve. Well, you know what? And I'm sitting here in my Eddie Bauer Ford Explorer. Hey, <laughs> you're one of them. <laughs> you know, but I love it, but I can afford to do it. Well, then, you're, then you shouldn't be whining. I'm not whining. I'm saying you should But I know shouldn't. a lot of people that, you know drive a lot and do sales and have to go door to door and their commissions didn't increase yeah but they also bought uh, too expensive a car with too low uh, uh, a miles per gallon rating uh, in the first place so how do you plan your life then if you're gonna buy a car today or get a I job plan today, I plan worst case plan you know I, you want you want the answer or not well, you want yeah. the answer or not I, want I plan that. I plan for the worst case scenario. Well, you're lucky you're in a position that you can do it. No, but, I'm not talking about that. You're, you're, you're wrong. That, that would be planning for a best case scenario. I'm planning for a worst case scenario. My plans are based on what happens if the economy goes belly up and I live accordingly. And, and to do that, and I agree, and everybody should have at least, what, six months, or they say a year's worth of supporting themselves. God forbid right. they lose a job or whatever, but. Unfortunately, America is run so poorly that 
No, it's not because America is run so poorly. It's because Americans run their own lives so poorly. Ed McMahon is not living under a freeway underpass because America is, is, is run so poorly. No, he's an idiot and he overspent. But, but, but he's just the most well-known idiot. <laughs> and the fact That's is true. that Ed McMahon is like the average American. Who lived above their means, and now they're get they're, now they're getting payback. So how do you how would you do it differently? If you could wake up tomorrow, you were president, and you start this world over. What would I don't you do? think the president can figure. Look, God, the problem is you know, not the president. The, the president is a moron, but a new president yeah. is not going to solve this problem. The exactly. problem is people have to take personal responsibility, and people have to learn how to budget their money, plan their careers. Get an education. Stop knocking each other up without uh, being married or without having money in the bank. And they have to start living beneath their means. That means with zero credit card balances. That means not buying houses with no money down and not being right. idiots. That's right. Then I guess maybe. It's and I do not feel people. sorry for the morons out there who are getting creamed by this turn of events. It's their own fault. It's not the fault of the government. It's not the you fault of people's commissions not being raised by companies. It's the fault of the moron who buys a Hummer and then is whining that he can't trade it in. There's something definitely different between my parents' generation and my grandparents. They always had. I don't know if you've noticed that in, in your family. That's or, because your grandparents lived through the Depression. Right. And, and they so they had. did not live above their means. Right. But they had better changed. savings habits. They had better spending habits. Absolutely. They were in we touch with how sausage is made. They knew how much things cost, and they, they, they planned their purchases accordingly. In those days, you didn't go to the store at Christmas time with a credit card. All year long, you'd put $5 a week in the Christmas club at the savings bank. And at the end of the year, you'd have 250 bucks, and that was your budget for Christmas. When did we go wrong? What what year, what decade did that change? I think it started in the seventies when uh, when everybody had a credit card, but yeah. nobody ever and people thought they'd won the lottery. I remember when my dad got his first credit card, and when Mastercard first came out, it was called Master Charge. I remember that, and they sent one to every adult in America. And my father received his master charge card when I was 12 years old. I remember this. And he opened it and he looked at it like he'd gotten a Christmas present. And then very proudly, he looked at the family and he said, let's break this baby in. Ah. And immediately what? we were out for shopping for clothing and we were out eating at the most expensive Chinese restaurant in town. Wow. And, and, and et cetera. And I do believe that people have just come to expect that they could just borrow on the equity in their home, uh, spend their credit cards to the limit. If they have to, they'll declare bankruptcy. I don't feel sorry for people as a result. I don't feel sorry for them. I don't. No, people I don't need feel to, sorry for them. People need to learn a good lesson. And that's what they're going to learn here. They're going to learn a good lesson. Well, you know what? From your mouth. I hope uh, it does happen, and I hope that people do change and that this is a wake-up call, that people have to change the way they live and the way they spend. They have to. Yeah. Whether or they or will or not, but I, but you know what? Step one is I, I, I'm, I'm tired of the sob stories of these poor whiners who go on to, hey, the gas prices are so high, I don't know how I'm going to pay for things, I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> Okay. I don't feel sorry for them. Stop feeling sorry for the whiners. Yeah. Stop you got it. it, Tom. You're right on. All right. Very good, Ellen. Thank you for the call. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at blowmeuptom.com. It's the Tom Likas Show.